Hello there. Today we are going to take a look at how we can make a fun project using AWS Chalice and S3 static files. By the way, Chalice is a wrapper on top of AWS Lambda and API Gateway. Those of you who know about Chalice or API Gateway know that we can easily build an API using it. But today we are not only going to build an API, we will also be building a front end that will be hosted on S3 and we will consume our API like a single page application. So we are building a full serverless web application. Chalice is an open source Python framework built by AWS itself and it makes Lambda and API Gateway a breeze. So I will be demonstrating just Python today, but of course you can use other languages and AWS SAM serverless access model as well and you can just get the concept from this video up to you really to work with chalice you need python of course you need beep and aws cli to be installed locally to handle deployment and everything i have those installed so please check the installation documentation yourself i have a live come on now i'm going to create a new project in my terminal i'm going to open it in my ide now we have some boilerplate files here, but we will focus on app.py for now. It's an entry point file for Chalice. Here you can specify a route and when hit, this will return this thing as JSON. Let's create our own endpoint super quick. We will call it app and it will return a dummy header image and some menu items. Just an example, really. Now we are going to quickly deploy this thing. And I know you're thinking, wait, deployment? So quick? This is a real magic with Chalice and whole ecosystem. So we are simply going to run Chalice deploy command. And we have our API ready, believe it or not. We will call our endpoint now from the browser. Here we go. We receive our JSON as we specified. So we started with zero and now we have our API ready in minutes. How cool is that? In the background, we have our Lambda function and API gateway created all taken care of by Chalice. And these AWS services are not expensive if you have a small application and they have a feature as well. Of course, for this Chalice deploy thing to work, you need to have AWS CLI and your AWS keys in your local machine or where you are deploying from. Please make sure to check the documentation for this. Now, as we have our API ready, we will build a Dimple frontend that will consume this API. Dimple? Oh, I mean, that simple. And we will be deploying this frontend to AWS as well. No server to manage. I will show you how. Now we will create an assets directory under this, a JavaScript directory and a CSS directory. Maybe we can use SAS here, definitely optional. Here we will we create a blank, blank SCSS file. file and a blank SAS file. Now I will create a basic webpack and npm workflow by which we will transpile or compile our assets to their single bundle files. Again, this is optional as well. I will use a webpack wrapper tool called Laravel Mix. It's because I don't like the hassle of setting up a webpack. I am not going to explain how we are going to set up Laravel Mix, but I have another video just on Laravel Mix. Link is in the description. You can check this later. Okay, fast forward. Our NPM and Webpack workflow is ready. Basically, I have added these files that are selected. Some of those are part of Laravel Mix. What it does is it transpiles these four source files and all their dependencies to a single file that we have instructed it to put in our static directory. We will simply run Laravel Mix by running npm run dev, and it will build our JavaScript and CSS files to our static directory. Here we go. Again, for all the details, please check my Laravel Mix video, not now, but later. To consume this API from JavaScript, I have to make some AJAX request. Uh, this is no fun, so I will use a tool called Axios. Let's install it by npm. Cool. Now we have added the code to make a get request to a certain URL. Which URL? We don't know. 
let's run Charlie's URL. It will give us our API's remote URL. Copy paste it. It's the base URL. And our endpoint that we want to hit is slash app. Now we have to use this file in our HTML. So let's create an HTML file directly in our static directory. No magic here, promise. We will use our CSS file and our JS file. In CSS, I'm gonna make our background a bit darker. So when we see this in the browser, we know that something dumb is working. Optionally, I'm gonna git ignore all the generated files that we have. We don't want this in our version control. Charles gives us a boilerplate dot git ignore, and I'm gonna add this. What I meant is we are gonna ignore all the compiled files in our static directory except index.html, which we just created and it's not generated. Our backend is already deployed, right? To deploy our front end, we have to push these files somewhere in a, like in a server. Now let's be clear, these are just the static files. We can just host them in a static file server like AWS S3, and we can access them from their use in our browser. It will consume our API. Let's split this thing like a single page application where our front end is just a consumer. Okay, now let's push this front end static files to S3. To do this, we can either manually upload these files in an S3 bucket, but it's not cool. So we can utilize AWS CLI and push these files programmatically. To do this, I like to create a make file and I keep all commonly used commands there. Fast forward, I have added these commands in our make file. Which, our which is our deployment procedure. If we run make deploy, this will run those set of commands, which means we are copying all these three files into our S3 bucket. Sorry, it's app.js and app.css, not application. And we will specify our bucket name here shortly. After deploying our front-end code, we will deploy our back-end. So it's up to date. So I have created an S3 bucket just for the purpose of this video. Let's copy our bucket name and use it in our deployment steps. Let's run our build and run make deploy. I know you are curious to see these files in S3, but before that, a life lesson about make files. I highly recommend using make files. It really makes our life easier. And once you get used to it, you will know what I mean. Here we go. Files are here. Now this S3 bucket is by default private. We can't use this index.html file as a public web page. To make it public, we have to change some configurations. You can see there is a static website hosting option. That means we are not doing any hack. AWS wants us to use this whenever needed. So we will enable it and provide our root file index.html, save. So it looks like it's done, but it won't work for sure. Now we have to make this bucket specifically public. We can see here block public access is turned on. We have to turn it off. We will also have to make each and every file and all future files of this bucket public. To do this, we have to add a policy by adding this bit of code. You will find it in the description, uh, but be careful, don't put any private files uh, in a public bucket. Definitely use a separate bucket for putting all the public files. Let's head over to our website again. Now you can see it's working. Yes, look closely. Our CSS is working, but if we check the console, we can see our JavaScript is not completely working. What this means is our front end can't access our back end due to some course issues because they are not in the same host. So the browser is preventing them from communicating in the background. Fair enough. To make it work, we will have to specify allowed host URLs in our backend scores configuration, which you can do it yourself. But to keep this video simple, I'm simply gonna allow any host to access our API. As we have made a change, we have to deploy again, make file for the win. Now we can see our Ajax request succeeded and it's getting the response that we are serving from our API. Let's do some fun with this data. To move ahead, I'm quickly gonna install Vue.js. If you don't want, you don't have to. And I'm gonna make a dummy website out of it. 
do not to make you bored watching the code, I have added some code in our app.js. I have set the header image and menu to what we have received from the server. Let's keep our build process running in another terminal so that it keeps building in the background. Now we will run our deployment again. Wait, I forgot to specify our view element. Deploy again. Back to browser. Now we see our header image and menu is set to what we have received from our server. Now let's see something in action. So to save you some time, I prepared this code. Basically, I'm using our header image and menu and rendering it in our front end. We are picking up our header image from our data using it as source here. And we are rendering our menu using the slug and title received from our backend. Let's deploy our changes and check back in the browser. Fair enough. We see our image and menu. So our silly front end is now using our API. Both front end and the back end are hosted in AWS in a serverless fashion. One thing you will notice, this thing is not being served via HTTPS. You can use Cloudflare on top of it and add SSL and other features. There are also other ways of doing this. There are many tutorials online. Or if you want me to make another video on this topic, please leave a comment below. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Peace be upon you.